Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Christ. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend again is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look! Here's the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard John say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and that they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah which is translated anointed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Praise to you Christ. Please be seated. So this morning we sort of go off cycle a wee bit in that this is the year of Matthew, but here we have John. And wait a minute, didn't we have the baptism of Jesus last week? And we seem to have it again, only in the Gospel of John, it occurs off stage, so to speak. Already happened. And uh, John in this Gospel is John the Testifier, John the Prophet, or John the Revelator, as the song goes. Um, and if you don't know that one, on Spotify, Carpenter Ants, John the Revelator. That's your musical homework, you'll love it. John the Revelator, okay. But you know what we do have this morning? Is we have the first words out of John's mouth in this gospel. What are you looking for? Gee, first words, that's kind of hard. It's a, you know, this, this sort of vague question. Now, I think after getting this sort of teaching from John the Baptist, they get Lamb of God, they get that John is to give testimony to this person, and, and here's why, why John even was doing what he was supposed to do. But as in any part, part of the Gospel of John, after a while there's so much verbiage that I don't think they quite know what they're exactly supposed to be looking for. It's absolutely beautiful poetry. But are we absolutely sure what it means? No. I don't know about you, but, you know, it might be a little hard to figure out. But here's what they do know. 
They've been following John. They've been following one who is preaching that something different is going to happen. That, that more love, more justice, that God is going to do a new thing while fulfilling the promises of old. So they don't know exactly what they're going to find. But they do know that this is the path that God has put them on. And so, when John says, there he is. And did you notice that this happens over three days? Day one, then the next day, and then it's four o'clock in the afternoon, and they stay with him, nice little precursor of three day. Always pay attention to three day intervals in gospels, correct? Because resurrection's gonna happen. Something's gonna happen on that third day. Now, we hear it's Andrew and some other disciple, perhaps the disciple that winds up being a key witness in this gospel. How much do we hear about Andrew after this? Not a whole lot. You know, we hear about his brother a whole lot. Any of us who have siblings, it's like, yeah, 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 you know, I did the hard work, but hello, that one got the, you know, that one got the attention. So Andrew goes and tells his brother. And just says, you know, come and see. I'm not going to explain it all. I can't explain it all. But come and see this new way. Come and see. Remain. Stay a while. He's staying a while. Perhaps we should too. And don't look for the old way. Be open to the new. There is a story that long after all of this happened, and of course you know how these stories are. It may not be factual at all, but it is true. <laughs> that The beloved disciple was sitting with a member, a young member of the community, outside the gates of a city. And in the morning, they're sitting there and someone comes up to the city gates and says to the beloved disciple, so what's this place like? What's this city like? And the beloved disciple says, what did you find in your old city? And this man said, I found, a, I found a good place. I found a strong economy. I found good businesses. I found righteous people. And the beloved disciple says, that is what you will find here. If that is what you found in your old city, person goes in. And a couple hours pass and someone else comes to the gates and says, what's this place like anyway? And the beloved disciple says, what did you find in your old city? And this person says, it was a mess. People were nasty. People were mean. And and, I, you know, I could barely make a living, but, you know, I got by, I guess, but that's why I'm trying to find someplace new. And the, guy, and the man, beloved disciple says, well, that's what you'll find here. And the man, and he went ahead and he went into the city. Now, the young person standing by the beloved disciple said, I don't get this. You first said to the person who asked, 
that you'd find good, that you'd find, you know, that he, he find he was, what he was looking for, he'd find. And then you said to this other person who was, you know, discontent, that he'd find what he was looking for. And the beloved disciple said, as long as they are clinging to the old, they will find that wherever they go, wherever they go. And about this time, a third person came along. And he was different. There was something unusual about this person. He walked as though haunted, but also practically ran to the city gates with some sense of expectation? We don't know. And he's almost about ready just to go into the gates without asking. And then he sees the beloved disciple and the young person sitting there. He says, good morning. This looks like an amazing place. And the beloved disciple just couldn't help himself. He said, well, where do you come from? What did you find in your old place? He said, I loved where I was, but it no longer exists. And he turned and he showed his back and his back was burned. And he said, I'm from Pompeii. I loved my people. I loved my place. I loved everything about it. But the old ways didn't work. The mountain kept smoking, and we kept on offering sacrifices. And it smoked again, and we offered sacrifices. And it smoked again, and, and finally, it just blew. And I just sensed that this was going to happen, and I tried to tell my family, and I tried to tell everyone, and then I just ran. And I feel horrible for all that I've lost. But because of that, I had no expectation. I just want to be among people again. Tell me, sir, do you live here? Yes, the beloved disciple said. He said, well, what about your people? Where are you staying? And the beloved disciple got up, clasped the hand of the man, and he said, we stay in the community of the beloved of God. Come and see. We will have new life together.